There's a strong crossover between Symbolicy the script and Symbolicy the experimental series. To give you a little taste of the script, four film students come across the work of the mystic Simon J. Moyer. And, and there's about three boxes, and it's filled with material dated, undated, scattered all over the place. So the filmmakers decide to split it four ways. And it's then that the filmmakers become more of a subject of their own documentary. Uh, because it's then they uh, all split, they all organize the material. They also experience an expansion led by Simon that opens them up and then uh, they eventually all come together, organize it completely, put them into working binders and present them as gifts. And speaking of gifts, I was fortunate enough to receive one shortly after I completed the second half of the Symbolicy series. I was given 18 binders, and it was then I had the material I needed to start the third half of my Symbolsy project called Boxes to Binders. And so that's when I also knew that I was um, crossing that bridge again, because I too, like Simon, had several boxes of material scattered, dated, undated, and whatnot. Um, it was then that I um, recycled all this old material, kept all the good stuff, organized it, put them into working binders as a gift to myself and uh, gratitude for the gift that I was given. And now that that is complete, it's time for me to now um, do the expansions that you're watching right now. And that's going back to the script of some policy to get back into the story and into the characters. And the way I'm gonna do it is to do the expansions that I wrote for them in the story. To kind of see how that opens me up as a creator to give me better direction for this film and better hopefully better tell the stories of the characters. As a child, I used to visualize people from all walks of life and time. And once I got a clear picture of them, I'd always think to myself, if this person existed once here on Earth, or do they still exist? And what is their message and why am I seeing and feel their energy? So this expansion is kind of uh, similar to visualizing these people. However, this time I know they exist. I know they once had a life here on Earth. So what I do, I plan on uh, finding several different photos and taking those uh, people out of there and using them as inspiration kind of to tell their story, to give me some guidance in this dream um, expansion. At the same time, I'll pay tribute to them by doing an artistic collage based on the imagery of the three dreams that were represented. And hopefully this will give me some kind of guidance and some kind of creative opening from these people that I chose from these vintage. This expansion kind of began with several vintage photos and then end up after Three Nights of Dreams became this kind of collage of dream imagery. And I actually had to do a kind of heads or tails bracket to kind of see which person in these vintage photos gets to start off as my first dream guide. So on my first night of dream, I saw this lady in the 1980s, and she was about 80 years old, which makes sense from this kind of look of this picture. And she was in this very nice peach dress um, with matching hat, pearl necklace, and it's something like the Queen of England would wear. And she told me her name was Claire, and I truly believed that I tapped into this energy of Claire. And she came through and told me her name. And everybody else in these vintage photos became my, my dream guides for other parts of the project. And just like my other dream expansion in this uh, Tell This Vision series, I had a person make a guest appearance for all three nights. The guide on this journey was a Native American man from the past, and I truly can't remember ever having uh, a guide be there for three nights in a row. So for me, that was kind of a sacred uh, celebration of this expansion. In one of the dreams, there was this big 125 font in front of me. And I was thinking, what does 125 represent? Is it something going to go down in 125 days? And since December and January are just around the corner, maybe something was going to go down on December 5th or January 25th. And since nothing really went down on those days, um, it might have to wait until January 20, 25 for something really to go down. Uh, I don't know, so we'll just have to kind of wait and see what that represented, you know. So then there was this dream where there were all these people in these egg-shaped pods kind of um, shooting off into the air through these worm-like tubes. And so then surrounding that as this blend of my kind of doodles of my project representing the blend of both the project, my imagination, and um, this dream expansion. 
I really enjoyed creating this style, you know, whether it was good or bad or, you know, it was just fun to create using this dream as inspiration, kind of tap into this inner child and just have fun with it. And I will definitely continue to do more dream projects like this one. Um, this expansion will definitely be added to the new Symbology pack, especially after going through an experience, experience in it and actually enjoying this process. Ella's expansions are very similar to Anthony, however the rules have changed a little bit. So part of the expansion is for me to write down any questions, any thoughts, any feelings, any uh, guidance that I want to receive, whatever it may be. And what I'll do is I'll write them down on a piece of paper, uh, cut them up, and then I'll uh, fold them up. And then what I'll do is um, put them in a Ziploc bag, shake it up, and let the games begin. So in my symbolic projects, there are countless ways to do these expansions. So a part of this expansion, what I do is uh, put the good energy out um, and shake it up to Ziploc bag, put the good energy and see what I need to, what I'm gonna use as guidance. And I'm gonna pick out one of these questions, one of these ideas. And then what I'm gonna do for three nights is record my dreams. And then at the very end, blend all this dream information together to hope to, in hopes of, to create a kind of a positive outcome, a positive, um, Guide, a positive kind of guidance, story, whatever it may be, that would reflect the question or the idea that I picked out of the Ziploc bag in order to tell the story. All right, so here it is, the guidance of Dr. Same, the three-page story of the three nights of dreams blended with my imagination to kind of tell me uh, or give me guidance from my future self. And I feel that doing this project was very beneficial to open me up as the creator, but also to come up with the concept of when I do return to this, when I come back to do an expansion like this, um, my next intentions of dreams will be to um, come up with new ideas and concepts for film projects, for characters, or other other uh, things that come to me, and then um, kind of blend them all together at a certain point and kind of make that a focus and kind of use my own interpretation to incorporate it into a script project or a short film or um, whatever it may be and make them come to life. And that's what I kind of plan on doing them for the future projects uh, with this kind of expansion. So thank you for viewing my experience through the character Ella. I love, that our, I love that in our lives here on earth that we're surrounded by the sacredness of numbers on a daily basis. Just like letters, there's an art form to the combos that you can do with numbers as well. So when you find uh, ways to blend those two together, uh, you can truly open up a variety of creative possibilities. I love the idea that you can give a musician um, a set of numbers and he can transfer that information and play it on the guitar. And so why not you know, use that inspiration and uh, create names and words and phrases and blend it with uh, you know, the alphabet, um, blend the alphabet with the corresponding numbers and play that information on the guitar and have that be the new inspiration. It could be names and words and people and inspiration. I'm gonna create from that. So because I'm gonna kind of take the expansion light, um, I'm gonna start with just my initials, what happened to be uh, BNG. I'm gonna translate my alphabet into the numbers that equals 2137. So my first challenge is to play the bass line of 2137. Because there's such a large gap between the 2 and 13, um, I decided to create another option called Keep Them Separate. 
where I separate the one and the three, giving it a two, one, three, seven follow -up. But I don't want to keep them separated for long, so I don't. I want to bring them together to kind of see what they're made of. So I add the one and three together, giving it a two, four, seven baseline combination. So again, these possibilities are endless when creating different kind of phrases and words and incorporating the things. So why don't we? Uh, Take a stand and kind of keep rolling with this kind of energy and see what we can create. In the story of Symbolus, he, I created Gary as a musician. So when he came across the material left by Simon, he incorporated all that into his music and kind of created a new art form. Um, now, I'm no musician by any stretch of imagination, but when I took on Gary's expansion, it allowed me to tap back into the bass and do these kind of experiments that I haven't done in over 10 years. And also it allowed me to kind of plant the seeds of ideas that I would like to implement to my project See Art Tell, a celebration of artists, filmmakers, creators, and everything in between. Kind of take them out of their comfort zone and try to do, do these experiments to kind of see what we can create. So that's what I kind of want to do moving forward. Um, so with that being said, um, thank you for your time and viewing this. I'm going to leave you with um, a baseline from my initials from a telephone. When you look at a telephone, which is 264. Again, thank you for your time and checking this out and my journey into the character of Gary. Thank you. So last but not least, one of the driving forces behind Symbolic's script and one of the main characters, Sage. And part of Sage's story is about honoring of the mystic Simon J. Moyer. And it's her goal to deliver uh, his words, his message, to be able to tell his story. You know, it's her goal to tell his story. But in order to do that, and part of her expansion is to kind of go back into her inner child, and kind of heal events from her past. So part of getting into her uh, character, that's what I kind of prepared to do with this expansion. I plan on kind of going back to events in my life where I felt nervous, scared, worried, down, or hurt in any situation. And kind of go back as my, my current self. To go back and do these guided imagery and meditations to help heal and child, to give it a new life, a new feel, um, and a new ending to the story, to give it a positive um, kind of outlook. So as I return to my current self, I turn to my future self and I give the gratitude and thanks for the guiding light as I travel to the next stages of future development. This expansion is to receive the universal message with the help of a radio station and my imagination. Kind of as of late, in the last couple of years or so, I've been kind of on this uh, blues, jazz, classical, new age kind of kick. But over the expansion to really work, I'll have to tune into a more lyrically based station. So I'm gonna head back to a close musical Canon of 13 years, a station that's for the people, by the people of 90.3 KEXP here in Seattle. And with my symbolic project, there are a possi a possibility are endless. But since this expansion is about my inner child, I'll use my birthday as inspiration. So for four days, I will tune into KEXP at 419, and I'll write down the name of the band and the song that's being played. I'll then get the lyrics of all four songs and blend them together to tell the universal message, tell a story about where I'm at in my life, what direction I'm going, and, you know, what can come out of this story when I create it, you know, let's see what are the possibilities of this project and what needs to be told, you know, so, and then that I can do is also represent these bands that I use their material and blend it with those four together, and hopefully that'll help spread the word, generate what I'm doing. So we'll see how it goes and tell this universal message. When I first started the expansion, I planned on just creating a short story based on the lyrics and imagery of the four songs. But as I began to formulate the story, it became clear to me that this needs to be turned into a film. So right now I'm preparing the first stages of the outline, the first draft of the script, and then I'm just going to let it breathe, let it do its thing, and then let it grow within itself. So when I return, I'll be a few steps ahead of the game, and I'll know at that point which direction I want to take this. And this experience by doing this is actually helping me write scripts, uh, figure out dialogue, and create this story. So it actually is beneficial to my kind of school of heart knocks.
The next stages are all about the promotional stages of this concept that I'm doing with KXP and to the bands. So my goal is to actually request all four songs in a row and have the DJ represent what I'm doing um, and maybe put it on the playlist and have people look my direction and see what I'm doing. The goal is to kind of promote uh, representing that I'm you know, using KXP as my guide uh, for this uh, part of my series. So uh, let's see what happens. Oh, get back to the radio station by having people create the same style or the same kind of uh, similar styles to the way I created these uh, film project based on the four songs that I've, that I've come across. And I find it unique the way that the way that they work, uh, whether it's the DJs playing what they, you know, the uniqueness of what they play to the listener power and blended with imagination and the style to create a short story and to showcase it in front of uh, many people. I think it would be a good way to give back to KEXP and get back to community.